for the first time and you're brand new, wow, you're going to have a lot of fun with watercolor. It's a great, it's a ton of fun. Uh, stick with us here. I always mention subscribe on the right hand side below if you haven't subscribed. This way you stick with us and you can keep watching our videos and we're doing videos like this all the time as well as every other um, subject matter you can imagine in watercolor. We do, we do flower paintings and we create seascapes and beach scenes and um, landscape scenes with barns and trees and we do all kinds of fun stuff like this. Everything is watercolor though and um, but all those that uh, many of you that are my regulars and you're always with me you kind of know if you can become creative with your watercolors and have fun exercises like this where it's not too serious, you'll find that you'll be able to kind of create your own bit of toolbox of, um, uh, I guess, techniques and methods that you can use when you're painting that are going to help you in every situation when you're painting watercolor. It might just be a small bit of wash that you're working on and if something goes wrong but right away you know wow I could rescue it quick because I can grab a tissue and blot up this section or oh I could use a larger brush and I can get this whole area done really fast and look really loose and fun versus trying to use a smaller brush and then I might wind up making it look too overly worked and things like that so you'll learn all these things as we go here but um, I'm glad you're here I'm glad you found us here again if it's your first time and again please subscribe if you hasn't haven't it's really important this way YouTube can send you my videos uh, on your homepage at, on YouTube so no obligations when you subscribe it just means that your YouTube's going to let you know um, on your homepage when you open up YouTube the next time that I've made a new video so there's no emails or text messages or anything like that silly stuff that goes on on the um electronic devices these days with people calling and emailing and all these things like that yeah you have a lot of fun here stick with us we're gonna have tons of fun going forward we're doing lots more figures now going forward we're gonna work it into our regular routine so it's not like this is gonna overtake my channel i'm doing all my normal routine on youtube if you've been following me for a long time and thank you so much for always joining along with us here and all the beautiful comments in the comment section but we're sticking with our normal routine as always we're just going to work in a few little more uh figure exercises because i know people really like figures a lot of you have mentioned in the comment section over the last couple of years when i've done figure painting like oh chris do more of these you know uh, yeah these are really good i like these so i'm just going to add a few more of, of the figure um paintings to the repertoire here I'll come right back in just a second. I just wanted to show that we could do a quick repair or two with our uh, titanium white paint so that, you know, you can kind of see how you can fix this up a little bit. Okay, be right back. All right, so we just saw the finished painting. Um, we're just doing figures again here, enjoying it. Let's um, just make a couple. I, I just wanted to make a quick sketch with some Sharpie marker just to kind of, if you can key, on, key in on this one part of the drawing when you're uh, getting set to do your pencil drawing and then you eventually your painting of course um you just want to recall that um let's make sure that we keep the the head over the feet so if we have our head here on our figure we just kind of want to make sure that that when we come down this way and we're going through the the body we just want to make sure that the feet are so the figure's feet should be straight all the way over the top of the of the feet the head so the head you, you're always going to want to have your head sort of over the feet here so you know we have the arms and the shoulders like this we have the hair here but we just want whether it's a male or female figure whatever it is um let's make sure we keep the head over over the feet uh, if it's an action figure, usually if you have an action figure, let's say running, you'll usually have one foot underneath or over, you know, you, you'll have your head actually will be aligned with one of the feet in an action figure. So if the other leg is going back this way and the person is running like this. So if we have an action figure like this, the head will be here. There'll be one foot under the head. Usually that's the balancing point of the body. So you're, you're automatically usually going to always have your feet under your head, either one, one or two feet above your, or below your head is going to usually be your balance point for your body. So if you have a running figure, you'll always have your foot below the head, at least one foot below the head. And then here on this standing pose, this is just a, again, a standing pose of a figure in profile 
that head right here of our figure is right above the feet. So you just, it avoids having figures maybe that sometimes can be lopsided like this. So if you can imagine if you make your figure like this and the feet are over here and your head is here, it's going to look funny. It's going to look like your figure is kind of falling backwards. Or it could be the same thing where your figure might look like it's falling forwards if we had the feet like this. And it would look like the figure is falling forwards if we don't have the the head over the over the feet. So this is just that main thing to remember. If you can draw maybe a very simple, tiny little pencil mark just to kind of, with a ruler, you might take a ruler and put it on your, we'll do that actually. We'll, we'll kind of show you how we're going to do it just, just now. But, uh, but that's just kind of the thing I wanted to mention for this, for this painting we're going to do right now. We just want to make sure that the head is above the feet or the feet are below the head pretty much in line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you will, you want to have that kind of in line for this standing pose. Okay. All right. So we'll just keep going here. And like, again, I, I said, I would probably, I'll use this ruler to just make a quick mark pencil line over here uh, on my paper. So I'll just uh, make a very, very super, you probably won't see this on camera because I'm making it so light. I don't want to kind of disturb the paper and have a dark pencil line going through my figure. But I did make a, a very, very super light pencil line right down the center where my figure is going to be. And that's all I need to know. Now I can kind of start doing my figure. And I'm just doing this by, you know, um, I'm improving this figure. I'm just want, making a, a standing figure. So I'll just start off with the head. And uh, that's about it. So I'm just gonna make the head here. And I'll make it maybe about an inch large, the head, approximately. Like that. And then if you think you might want to kind of correct something, you can always... You can always do a, a quick uh, erase a little bit with uh, some kneaded eraser. But you can kind of see I have about an inch here of a head. And if I take my ruler, how close am I? Yeah, I'm one inch exactly. So I do a one inch head here. And then we always and remember uh, the human form is about uh, 7.5 or 7.5 or 8 head lengths tall. Um, so if we go down to the bottom of the paper, I might have actually started too low here. So let me erase this. I'm going to have to start higher. So now... This is another thing I, I wanted to mention here on this um, drawing portion of this video is you can always use your rulers to kind of set the um, the scale of your painting. So if you want to make the, the full figure in your rectangle, so let's make our rectangle here too. I should have started with this. I always try to start with my rectangle <clears throat> just to go around my paper. So I kind of know this is where this is going to be like the window of the mat or the frame. So I want to make sure I'm kind of painting with the end in sight. Okay, so that's going to be the, the frame or the um, mat that we're going to put over the top of the painting before we put it in the frame. Now, now that's the that's the space we have to work in. So now if I know the human form is approximately eight head lengths, then if I make my um, head length one inch I'll have to have eight inches and I do I have eight inches from right tippy top here down to the bottom so if it's a little bit smaller not a big deal we can shrink down we can shrink things down just a touch maybe if we wanted to so I'll go a little bit I think eight inches is fine I'll even go seven and a half so I'll start here Seven and a half is here, seven and a half inches is there. So that gives me my, my scale of one inch equals the head. So we're gonna make the head one inch approximately here. Like that. We're gonna do that, one inch is the head. And then we just go down and you can even make hash marks every every inch if you want, very lightly though, just so you see them. One, two, I'm going every inch, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I made tiny little hash marks, just enough so that I can see them. You might be able to see them a little bit on camera here. But now what I do is, um, with, uh, with those hash marks, now I know I, I'm going to just use them as like guide points. So I know here I'm going to do the shoulders in the back of the, so the shoulders in the back of the figure here. And then I'm going to come down like that on a slight. And usually the waist is about four head lengths. So one, two, three, four inches. So four inches on this figure is about the waist. A little bit. Maybe we can make it a little higher so we can get the feet in the, the bottom here. So I'm going to make it a little bit higher. No one should notice if you adjust your figure a little bit to squeeze it in. As long as it's not dramatic, dramatically different. And then here we have the shoulders coming down. And the arm, so his arm is coming down this way and about, about here, his arm comes up a little bit there. And then I would say even we could make this, we could make this arm a little longer here, I think. A little bit out this way too, a little bit, yeah, I think a little bit out further. So yeah, I would say that's about a half a head out this way. So the the arm is out here a little bit, and it comes up this way. And then the waist is here, so this person has uh, a little extra, um, a little bit, a little bit of, his waist is a little large. He's been eating some pasta and bread a little too much. And he's, his legs come down like so. And I'll pretty much just come straight down on an angle. I'm not going to make it any real... So if you can kind of see, I just did basically some pretty simple angles. We did the head, one inch tall. And then we just came down four inches from the top. One, two, three, four. And that's about where the belt is, the waistline, here. And uh, we have the elbow here in the arm. That just comes down the arm and there's the elbow there. And we'll have a little bit of shadowing under here. And then we'll have the the uh, uh, the so we're going to do the uh, gluteus maximus there, and then the other leg over here. So we'll have like we'll maybe show a little bit of the other leg this way, so you can kind of give give the painting a little bit of dynamics with maybe an extra little bit of the right leg on the other side kind of showing through. And then we'll have the the bottom of the pants and then the shoes. Okay, so that, and then we'll have a little shadow cross too. This is the figure, and we'll say the light's coming from here, from the back, like that. So we'll put our light insignia up there. So I think we're pretty much set. We have a good start to the painting, and I would say, um, you know, I, I tend to say, don't worry about your pencil drawing so much. If you can get the nuts and bolts of your drawing done, where you're kind of laying things out, like I said, with the head in an inch, and then going down your 7.5 or 8 inch increments for the human form, which is about 8, you know, 8 head lengths is a human form approximately. So if you have you, whatever size you draw your head, that's where everything else will scale out to. So if I made a very, very, uh, let's say if I take my scrap paper again here and just do a quick uh, idea of what I'm kind of, just so it's really pretty clear... Let me see if I can find some paper here. Here we go. So if we were to start out and make the head a lot larger, let's say like this, well then if we have to go eight head lengths down to the bottom of the page, we would say one, two, three, four. So we would run out of space. So we'd only be able to maybe make the head down to the waist. And that's all that we could fit into this painting because we've made the head really large. Versus if we made the head really small like this, then we would say, okay, there's one head length. I got to go eight head lengths now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Eight head lengths is the human body. Well, we have tons of room left over. If this is our border of our drawing or painting, and we start off with a small head like that, well, then we know, wow, that might only be like one quarter of an inch. 
This might be like an inch and a half, almost two inches, so that's way too big. So if you do start out with one inch as your head size, that should fit in nicely with doing like an eight by 10 size drawing. Cause this is about an eight by 10 here, I think, approximately. What do we have here? We have a, yeah, seven, yeah, about seven and a half inches by eight inches. Yeah, so that, that fits in good with what we're doing the scale. But again, if you start out really small with a small head, and then you scale down to get your eight head lengths like that, so then you have your human form like so, and you have your human form like this. Then you notice that you have all this extra space here, because we started a little bit too small with our head, and then here if we start way too large with our head, and we're making it like two inches, well then we know we can't fit inside this paper, this size paper, which is like again about a seven, ten by seven size paper, because we started out too large. So always remember when you're doing figure work, whatever you, whatever you always start with the head, and you just you know adjust your head size accordingly to the size of your paper. If you have a really large sheet of paper, well then you're going to make your head a lot larger. You might make your head two inches tall or three inches tall or large, I should say, you know, height wise. So it's up to you, but that's really your scale. When you're doing figure work, you just remember you're starting with your head and you're just gonna use the head size length to um, scale the rest of your body parts, however much you wanna put into your painting, you're gonna use that head as your scale. So again, here we went about one inch and that's perfect. We went down eight head lengths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we got to the bottom of the picture with our feet and we have a little extra room on top and bottom. We're all good to go. All right. So I'm going to come back and we'll start painting and um, we'll kind of see how this all uh, works out with our shadows and some fun colors. And we'll get started in just a second with the actual painting. All right. So we're going to get started doing the painting portion of our figure. And I like to always mention, please use the... Um, the most comfortable brush size you like for your figure work. With figure work, uh, I, I would say it kind of works the same if you're doing any other type of uh, watercolor painting, no matter what you're doing, landscapes, seascapes, city scenes, flowers. You know, use use a, a brush that's going to help you to accomplish what you want to, um, what, what's going to make it more comfortable for you to uh, execute your washes. So for the head, I'm going to start with a smaller brush. I don't want to go in there with a really large brush that is way oversized to try to do some of this finer details with the head here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a smaller brush. This happens to be the brush that comes with the um, Schmincke palette. So if you ever order a Schmincke palette, the really nice aluminum ones that I, I tend to use for most, a lot of my videos, and it has these paints inside of it. So if you see the Schmincke palette with these, paints inside that's the one it's got like uh three it's an aluminum palette and it's got the top and the bottom that you flip open and it's aluminum you can always look up my palettes on chris petri and you'll see all the different palettes i use and i just did a recent video too on how to customize your schmincke palette so i think schmincke palettes are great they're aluminum they're light you can customize them if you want schmincke also sells these individual pans you can buy these separately and put other colors you might like in there um, so you can add, sometimes if you want to add a few extra colors to a certain painting you might be doing, maybe you're doing like a beautiful seascape and you want some extra blues and greens in there for the water or something. Well, you can just take a couple of these extra pans that Schmincke sells on the side. You can get them on Amazon or, you know, on the art store supplies or in the art stores. And then this way you can fill them up with custom colors that you might not use every day, but other colors you might want to add in there. That's just a little bit of a rabbit trail thing here. We're just going down a quick little rabbit trail on palettes, but, but it's important to note that, you know, you want to, um, you want to use an, uh, the, the, the right size brush for you, for what you're going to try to paint and, uh, the colors too. Um, I'll make a little touch of black here. Black is very strong in our Prang palette. And, but I meant to say the reason I mentioned the Schmincke is because Schmincke comes with this number five Da Vinci travel brush. And these are the really nice travel brushes where you can just like, when you're done painting, you can rinse them off and then put the cap on. And there's a little hole in the top so they dry out naturally. You won't get any mold on your brush. And this is, uh, and you know, 
these are just great brushes. You can throw these in your pocket, in the pocketbook, uh, in a backpack, a duffel bag, whatever. So if you go out and do a little painting, you know, during lunchtime or on the weekends or whatever, or if you do some traveling, you bring some of these travel brushes with you. They, you know, they, they, they put, you can put it right in there like that. And, and then the brush doesn't get damaged at all. The brush stays pristine and you won't have any problems with your brush being all bent up and, and distorted, your brush hairs. These are good quality brushes. We want to keep them safe and sound. And then, you know, you can open them up and you have this handle that, like this. And this comes with the Schmincke palette. I was just talking about the aluminum palette. You could check on my site. You'll see the, that I've just done a video on the Schmincke palette, customizing your Schmincke palette. But let's just keep going here. So I'm doing some darker brown with some tiny bit of black mixed in with my brown and a little bit of orange for my hair color here. And again, I'm not really... I think if I can get some good darks here for some of the shadow side. So I can get some shadow side here. And then I can rinse off my brush. Maybe dry a little bit of the water off the brush on a tissue. And then I go in and just get more of that orangey color here for the light side of the, the hair. Again, the light's coming from this side this way. Like that. I think that looks good. So right away you can kind of see we're off to a good start. We're doing the head. We're starting with the head just like we did. We started with the drawing with the head. Now we're just doing the same kind of thing. We're starting off with the, the head for our painting. And we're going to come down here. A little more of the darker wash there. Again, I'm using an appropriate size brush for the area that I'm working in. The head here is a little smaller than the rest of the body. So I want to make sure I'm using a brush that I can kind of navigate through this section here carefully without bumbling around too much and that looks pretty good so now we have some hair on there nothing too fancy and again we're just having fun here enjoying the journey of watercolor the journey of figure painting and that's all it is is we practice as we can as much as we can and um, maybe right now I'll add a touch of red for some of the flesh tones, which I think have a little more red, but I'll mix that in with this. Maybe a little bit of the orange red. And I think that would be pretty good for the flesh tone. And uh, let's try it out. So I'll just go right around quickly with the nose side of the cheek, the chin, right toward the neck, and that is good. Now from that point, I could see, you know, it, I made a little smudge over here, so you could probably see that, that smudge I made. So that smudge right there, we can fix that with a little bit of titanium white. So if you ever have a little smudge happen on your painting right away, don't worry. Titanium white will repair that. We can, we're going to show you at the end of the video how you repair some smudge marks if you have an issue like that. So the first thing is if you're starting your painting and this happens right away when you're working on the head, you just tell yourself, don't worry. You're going to fix that later with the titanium white. It'll, you know, trust me, it'll look fine. So don't get frustrated when you're first starting out and you make a smudge. Just keep going. Forget about that, you'll fix it later. Same thing if you're doing laundry and there's a sock missing, you worry about it later, it'll turn up somewhere. And um, so now, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to get, uh, let's see now, I think we'll use some of that black again and brown. I just want to make a little bit of a, a little bit of a dark shape here over where the collar is. A little bit of a shadow there, a little bit of a dark line there, and then maybe we'll get some purple. So again, I'm working kind of with my smaller brush, a little bit of that kind of purpley color mixed in with maybe a little bit of orange. 
so kind of like a warm and cool purple. And I'm going to just do a shadow on the shoulder, I think, over here. See a bit of a shadow here. Looks pretty good. And then maybe I'll do another shadow down here. Under the uh, elbow. And maybe a little bit of blue. And then I notice I need a little bit of spritzing on the paints. Sometimes they get dried up a little bit here, so I'm going to try to get some of that blue in here. Like that. So I want to get a blue shadow under the um, under that part of the... And then a little shadow there. I think that's about good. Just some shadow there. And then another bit of shadow maybe over here. And then another bit of shadow over here too. Maybe that's the belt. And maybe a little shadow too over here. Okay, so now we have some shadows working for us. And uh, what else do we have here? A little bit of shadow back over here, maybe. And I'm going to leave this, uh, the white shirt. A little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of yellow. Some gold on the shoulder up here. With a little bit of the uh, flesh tone, too. Kind of blended in there. that okay so I'm strategically putting in shadows right now and then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to shift to a larger brush and uh, I'm going to use this larger brush here it's quite a bit larger this is a number 10 a Skoda travel brush and again, this is another travel brush. These are great. You just un unaffix them apart like that. And you can put them together like this. And this, you can again throw it in the purse, the bag, the shirt pocket, duffel bag, suitcase, whatever you want. And when you're ready to paint, you just put it together, paint, and it's got a hole in the top up here. And that will let the air, it'll air out and drive the brush. So you don't have to worry about the brush getting moldy or anything like that. You paint when you want to put it back together again. So these travel brushes, I use them a lot because I do travel for weekends sometimes to go, you know, uh, on uh, weekend getaways and things. So, and sometimes on vacation. So, okay, so now we're gonna use a larger brush. We're having fun here. Let's do the pants. So maybe we'll add some yellow. And I'll maybe make the darker part of the pants here. So I'll make the yellow. I'll put yellow and orange over here. Brown, yellow, orange, brown. Touch of black, just a little bit of black. Just to darken that up a bit. Maybe a little bit. Maybe that's too much. I don't think it is. And then I'll make the back of the pants here like so. Like that. And then once I get to there, I'm going to rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then I'm going to try to blend that out a little bit. Maybe I'll pick up some of this. There we go. So you want to blend this together. Like that. Blend the wash together. The quicker you can do that, transition over from the darker on the right side to the lighter, the quicker you can do that, the better you're going to blend that line out of there so that you don't see that kind of you know line 
that hard line going down there. So that's really good if you can kind of do it quickly. Mix your washes first, then start your painting as you go into it. Then you get your painting in. But that's really a critical kind of thing if you want to keep that looking really good with a nice blend from light to dark. <clears throat> and uh, here I'm going to again take some dark paint, uh, dry off the brush a little bit with my tissue. And then I'm just going to make this other leg over here with just that little bit of an extra line there. So that's the other leg there. And and then we're going to maybe make a little bit of a, a dark, like that black and brown. Black and brown and some orange. And we'll do the shoes here. We'll make those shoes a little darker, like that. And then we'll pick up some purple. Purple and orange for some shadowing. It needs to be more blue. And purple, I think. So that's what we're going to do. More blue and purple for the shadow. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do the shadow like that. Kind of blend it in with the shoes. And then, if we want, we could just add in a little extra um, Negative shade painting, which is which is just basically taking some background paint and adding it around the shirt to make that shirt look more uh, interesting and uh, kind of visible. So that's all you can do is just make some background washes. You could do swirling if you want. Large brush, though, really helps with this if you're doing this part where you're doing your washes, your negative shape washes here. You're going to want to do those with a large brush. You know, you can then soften it out here like that. And this is just having fun with the watercolor color medium. You're practicing your figures. You're not necessarily making a great painting. Maybe it'll turn out great and you're going to put it in a frame. And I'm all for that too. If you feel like it's really something you're really extremely happy with, then definitely pin it up on the wall, on the, fr you know, the fridge, put it in a frame, mat it. Um... I'm just kind of getting creative with some washes here with the large brush, which is so much fun. If you have a really large brush like this, it just makes painting like fun. You know, you can add in a, um, you can add in like a floor, like a kind of a floor kind of feel so that it gives the, it gives the painting a little bit of a, like if you'll feel like there's, he's walking on a sidewalk or, uh, you know, on a, on a patio or something like that, right? So if we could add that little bit of a floor feeling right there, a couple splashes, you know, that could be a sidewalk or a patio, something to that effect makes the painting, you know, a little has a little more realism to it and it becomes less of an exercise and more of we're already starting to think about how do we make this look a little more interest, interesting. And appealing and then we can even do some sidewalk lines here like this one like that and one like this and that's basically the star effect you know just radiating lines that are coming out from a center point somewhere out in the far distance but giving you the feeling that there's uh, a logical uh, there's an, uh, there's a lot there's a logic to it like these lines I'm not just kind of painting lines on here I'm pretending that we're looking at it and we're seeing some lines on a sidewalk or a patio and uh, 
and I'm just trying to make it look natural like that. Okay, so this is just one kind of fun thing you can do uh, for your figures. It, it gives it a little more um, fun to, or it, it makes it more fun to actually just add in some washes, have some fun with it, you know, add in a few items that you can kind of be creative with. It's great to practice just doing free creative things like this too as well, because when you're in a painting sometimes and you have to change something, it's good to kind of have that feeling of like you're confident in doing something creative that you've just made up off the top of your head so that you can sometimes catch something that might be a problem, but it turns out not to be a problem because you're able to kind of just be creative and change something on the fly because watercolor is a fast medium. Everyone knows that. You've been with me a long time, and if you're, he if you're here for... All right, so now I just wanted to mention you can do some repairs to your paintings. We talked about using the titanium white. Basically, this is the titanium white from Holbein. Uh, I just basically take the uh, cap off. I add a little bit of orange or um, yellow ochre or something like either a yellow ochre or an orange type color, which is a very warm, kind of warm color. And I put that into the top of the um, paint just to warm up that paint a little bit because the paint's pretty much straight white. So if I add a little bit of orange to that, it's going to look a little better. And then I just take that little bit of paint that's on the end of my brush and I just add it to the smudge I might have had before. And then once I do that, I just mix it around a little bit. And there we go. So you can do a little bit of touch-ups with your titanium white. And um, you can even add some colors once it dries. So if you put titanium white on carefully, kind of smooth it on there if you're trying to fix a smudge. Um, you put the titanium on first, titanium white with a little bit of the orange or uh, yellow ochre gold color. Just to warm up that white color. And then you can let that dry 100%, and then you can go over with a little bit of blue. So if you wanted to kind of blend it in a little better, you can blend in a little bit of blue color to that white that you put on there. But you have to let that dry 100%, that white, titanium white first. Then you can go over on top with just a little dab of blue to blend it in even better. But you can kind of see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Let's take a closer look right there. You can kind of see I fixed that smudge that was on the back over here by the back of the figure here so that it's barely visible now. Looks fine. And again, these are practice uh, compositions. So we're doing practice compositions with figures. I'm so glad you're joining along. And again, I hope you're subscribing if you're brand new and you're interested in doing figure work. I'm, you're at the right place at the right time. We're going to be incorporating these type of videos into my channel uh, more and more now, as well as the regular um, paintings that we always do, which is all of the great watercolor, classic watercolor paintings that, that everyone loves to do, the, the flower paintings, the seascapes, the landscapes with trees and cabins and rocks and all that fun stuff. We're going to do that all the time here on my channel. We're not changing anything. We're just adding in a little more figure work into our um, our format here on my channel because I want, I know many of you have mentioned you want to see more figure work. So I'm just kind of bringing in this, a little more figure work into my um format on my channel because many of you have mentioned you did want to see more figure work and that's all it is and I'm happy to do it because I really enjoy figure work and I've been working myself too uh, really uh, diligently on my figure work I'm trying to always work on my figure work constantly I have books on figures and um, I try to work from all kinds of interesting other watercolor artists that have done you know the watercolor figures for long periods of time so in any case we're going to do more of these I'm glad you're stopping by and joining along. And if again, if it's your first time, thanks so much for coming by. I'm happy you're here. You're going to have a fun time on this channel. Stick with us here. You'll learn. You'll grow. You'll always be creating better paintings each week as you follow along. We're covering the fundamentals of watercolor uh, first and foremost on my channel always so that you're getting the fundamentals each time you're sitting down and working with your watercolor so that you're not trying, you're not bypassing those important things fundamentals that you need to have so i'll always be covering the fundamentals so you just get that kind of like baked into your um repertoire so that you always will have good strong habits with your watercolor paintings and drawings okay all right so you um you have a great evening great morning great afternoon and we'll see you soon